All right, we're here with Luca Rossi, a Generation Liberty member from Monash University, my old stomping ground. Luca, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks very much for having me. So the first thing we'd like to ask is now, you're in particular interested uh, in the battles around climate change going on around Australia and around university campuses. Why is that? Um, well, I guess people are kind of getting sick of the climate thing just because it's on the news all the time. But yeah, yeah, what can... is interesting, I actually saw a, um, an article by Andrew Bolt where he was talking about how it's become more of a cult, more of a kind of religion. Mm -hmm. And that's what's interesting because they've got their prophet, Greta. They've got their demons, everyone else, who doesn't (laughs) believe in climate change. And they've got got their traditions now, which we see every day at Flinders Street Station, Mm -hmm. stopping hardworking people from actually getting to work. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's probably the most interesting thing is that how it's gone from a movement to an actual religion and like a cult Um, that's kind of permeated every aspect of society. Yeah, and I think that, like, there's been a switch because so many people were, you know, part of the climate strike a few weeks ago or, you know, were saying, like, oh, it's so brave that they're doing that. And then you get to these kind of protesters and you're just like, please stop. (laughs) It just seems to be an absolute turning of the tide on public (laughs) sentiment, just like... I just want to go to work and I just want to go home. Please get off the road. Yep, that's right. Everyone had sympathy for the kids, but now it's like middle-aged people doing the <laughs> yeah, runs. It's yeah. not as much. Anyway, so, but how's that manifested itself on university campuses? Like, what, oh. what have you seen down there at Monash? Since I've left, actually, it's probably not as, you know, under control as it used to be. <laughs> definitely not. Um, you've definitely got areas, very mm-hmm. specific areas that you want to avoid mm-hmm. just because they are rabid. Okay. <laughs> I've, been, I've been shouted out a couple of times. My friends have been shouted out just for saying, no, thanks, I don't want to leaflet. You really? are the literal reason that climate refugees are being tortured on Nauru. That's <laughs> really? the quote. That's so, the quote. Oh, I thought you meant you said that. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> what they like, were wow. screaming at us. <laughs> All right. Like they scream, they shout. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, you know, just recently we had our elections mm-hmm. and we had one party called Together and the other one which was just a single party climate policy sort of party thing. And um, it's just the same policies. You have no one else to vote for. Um, So you either go with climate plus all the other stuff or just climate and they don't know what to do with the rest of the campus. Yeah, yeah, making sure there's food. Yeah, so (laughs) pretty much making sure that everything runs well, you know, that single single policy party. Um, Yeah, but that's what Monash is come to. Has so, Monash always been a problem in university? So Pete, do you have any experiences from your time? Well, I was lefty when I was at Monash, but wow. I was a very Ooh. like disinterested, like I didn't really. Yeah. I wasn't that interested. You liked a few, you would, you had the equivalent of disliking a few tweets about the climate strike. Exactly. Obviously we didn't have Twitter back in my day, James, <laughs> but yeah, the equivalent you of You engraved a few things in rocks that were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I said benefit. carrier pigeons uh, expressing <laughs> my displeasure. No. So Luca, uh, you said there were areas of the university that, that that happens. Where is that? Like around the oh. cafeteria? No, no, no. So so we have... Yeah, you definitely don't want to go near the cafeteria, but I think they target that just because that's where everyone goes to eat. Um, learning and teaching building, which mm-hmm. is kind of worrying. Oh, yeah. Considering they're the ones who are supposed to be teaching the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, there was recently in Sydney that socialism conference. They had posters everywhere around that building. Um, and also Menzies, because that's okay. arts faculty. That's right. So, yeah, you kind of want to divert away from those yeah because i was like i went to university in melbourne too and like i was recently in the u.s at a college with my brother and i just saw like community notice boards that weren't covered in marxism posters and i thought wait is that is that actually what Whoa. posters like these boards are supposed to be because yeah. like i just get to the point where i'm like i've never seen one without 15 different stand up for marxism rallies mm. is that like monash uni too it's exact monash uni is you, they're, they're thick. The, the, the poles are How thick with layers of posters <laughs> and posters of just of socialism, Marxism, this conference, that conference. Let's fight capitalism, fight the patriarchy, fight this, fight that. You can't, you can't escape it. There was some mildly centrist poster. I can't remember what it was for that was put up. And I saw probably a professor. He was wearing one of those rainbow colored lanyards, which they all wear now. Mm-hmm. And um, he was going around and he was turning the posters upside down and putting them on the side of the poles that would be facing away from people walking past. Taking the centrist one. Yeah, the centrist one and like turning it upside down or trying to cover it or just tearing it off and throwing it in the bin. Um, And he's a professor, I assume. So it's just... Yeah, you can't have a different point of view. Yeah. And don't put up a poster. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things we'd like to ask all our uh, young people that come in here, Luca, is what hor- horror stories have you got from the tertiary education sector? Is there anything that... You've already given us a couple, to be fair, but mm-hmm. have you got in, any more that you can share with us? Yeah, well, apart from the one where I got screamed at about torturing refugees, yeah. there's... You've got to stop that, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I need to check my privilege. But there was a... Um, we were in a global studies class mm-hmm. and someone... The question was... 
what do you um what do you think has been good for the the world and it was in the context of like globalization or something and someone shouted donald trump <laughs> Was that you? Or? Excellent no, tra- that wasn't me. Excellent I, was, troll move. I was going to, but this guy, he got me. He was right at the back. He, he got to it first. And a girl sitting at the front, she turned around and she goes, who the F said that? Right? In front of the lecturer. Who the F said that? F you. Get out. Right? Oh. Screaming. And the lecturer, instead of kicking her out or something, just goes, guys, guys, we need, yeah. we need to calm down. You yeah. know? And it's like, she's literally swearing at one of your other students. For having a different opinion in your lecture, kick her out on an open, uh, open platform. Open question. platform. <laughs> what happened to the safe space? Yeah, apparently? exactly. Right, but yeah, rabid. Uh, you but go. you're enjoying Generation Liberty. Oh yeah, yeah, good. It's great. It's really good. We what, recommend. What attracted you to Generation Liberty and the ideas of liberty more generally? How did the, how did you come to it? Well, the ideas of liberty generally that was from my parents because they've, especially mum, she's Malaysian, and the way Malaysia's gone and going. Um, it's just the antithesis of what liberty is about. Um, so she's very passionate about that. Mm-hmm. And dad, coming from an immigrant family as well, coming running away from you know fascist Italy, that's in him was also inculcated freedom, and that's what he's tried to pass on to myself. And then IPA, my parents joined the IPA and they said, you know, you should you should check this out. Um, so I did, and then it turns out there was a Gen Liberty arm and rest is history fantastic stuff with, with malaysia what what exactly because i'm sure a lot of our listeners aren't 100 percent across the malaysian story what and at least 50 percent of the hosts <laughs> so if you could elaborate so yeah yeah going a bit more detail oh that. well it's I'm, I'm i'm sure everyone saw it was plastered all over the news recently the um the prime the party that had been in for 60 years since mm-hmm. they became independent was elected out and it was they there were raids of their houses and stuff and it was for example the the wife had a wardrobe that was full of just handbags, really, really expensive, like hundreds of thousands of dollars of handbags, mm-hmm. for example, right? And it's, because the thing is, th- there's a cap on how much politicians can make. So obviously what they've been, and everyone knows that's what they've been doing. And finally there was an investigation. They've just been siphoning money out of the banks, oh, okay, and, yep. you know, different sort of funds. I think there was, there was something to do with The Wolf of Wall Street, the movie by Martin Scorsese as well, like the funding to do with that, that really? was tied into it as well. Um, yeah, so it's just really, really corrupt. And now it's becoming more and more um, Islamic extremist mm-hmm. as well, the policies and things like that. So, you know, f- so mum now, for example, she's switched over. She's become an Australian citizen, right? And um, just trying to get away from that increased control. I reckon a lot of our Generation Liberty co- campus coordinators and also a lot of Generation Liberty members have parents from countries that aren't as free as Australia. Is that something you found? There's a lot of uh, pair children of immigrants who know what it's like to not live in a free society. Oh, yeah, definitely. And they're the ones who are the most zealous about keeping our society free as well, which is a great thing, you know. We try and defend it. And if you see it, if you see things repeating themselves, right, from your prior experiences or your parents' prior experiences, you try and stop it. Um, So having that sort of background definitely helps seeing the patterns. Fantastic stuff. All right, Luca, thank you so much for coming on the program. If you're at Monash University, uh, look out for more activities from Generation Liberty that will be coming up soon. Luca, thanks a lot, mate. Thanks very much.